what's growing on so I bet you guys can't guess what time it is I'm a little late for the party here a little bit of traffic this morning but uh, look who it is so Jim what are we working on today I'm trying to get the sweet potatoes out and get the other crops in um, so you know I was hoping about the, you know the nematodes and the um, southern peas we're gonna change that but I'm starting to see that maybe nematodes aren't the you know, the thing that's um, limited in production here, because, you know, they had a great crop of black eyed peas in here, you can see them. You know, all this stuff is the leftovers, residue, um, which is a good, you know, organic matter on there, and then all the seeds are there, but, you know, still having really ugly sweet potatoes. You have the dryness or moistness, then dryness, it's just that extreme change. You know, there's so much mystery. You know, my opinion on this is, this is a crop that should have, was planted May 1st, right? Um, so we're looking at May, June, July, that's 90 days. It's a 90 day crop. I go August, September, October. I leave them in the ground another three months. So they're, you know, any kind of soil life that's gonna start wounding this is op uh, access to it. So that's what I think's happening. And then you're looking at the healing here. So Jim, that, that kind of looks like a mutant. I mean, some kind of ugly potato. What are you gonna do, compost that? No, this one's a good ugly. Um, so, believe it or not, so I started marketing these a few years ago to um, Dunedin Harvest Co-op as uglies at 50 cents a pound. And people are used to paying $2 a pound for the pretties. I mean, there's a few pretties out here. Um, as I go, it seems like the drops are more pretty, like this one. You know, that'll be, you know, two bucks a pound. That's a much smoother potato, yeah. yeah. And then some will be bigger. And I'm seeing in different areas, they're different. Um, ones that look like that. It seems like the drops, which are much younger as in the soil, yeah. seem to be this way. Did you just do this this morning? Yeah, me and Joey did this. Wow. Way, and I did that yesterday. See them all lined up here? So, I mean, what's the, uh, what's your method? What's your pro tip here for getting this out? I see you got a rolling method going on. Well, yeah, that's definitely the way I've been doing it. They're doing it a little different than me, but I usually go along and cut. Um, I guess I can show that just that you can roll them up in a bunch to get the vines out of here because I know it's organic matter I'm taking off the soil but I've tried to compost them and they won't compost unless you get a really hot pile so you wow. end up with you know a lot of growth they just regrow. So where are you going to put the stuff? So this will go in the pile that goes to the city. The oh, other one get, that actually gets picked up? Right okay. and then they'll go hot composted which will kill it and then I'll get it back when I go get it but I mean. Look at the size of this ugly. I mean that thing probably weighs 10 pounds. <laughs> you know All right. you cut into that there's definitely you know for somebody who's doing like you know, sweet potato fries or chips or something like that, but it's not the biggest thing. But you know, my no. biggest issue here is to trying to get the ground covered for the summer. And look at that, it has done that. And you know, look how moist it is. I dug these maybe three days ago and I planted it yesterday. So the sweet potatoes got dug, so right now we're looking at... I see your little stick there, is that yeah, your guideline? So this, well, there's, so again, I want diversity out here and beauty so i'm trying to think in textures um uh growing length of time for each crop so right here this is a roll of radishes there's radishes under the yep. ground here and direct zone white icicle that goes this way and then there's a maybe three or four rows of um, spring garlic planted here so you'll have that you know grass-like texture here and then in the back there's snow apple turnips and beets up there and then more um, oasis turnips and then in the middle, and then there's another row of garlic up there to divide. So there's like three beds mixed in here, and then this is all seeded with arugula in between. Um, but yeah, you come here in three days, and this will all be popped up. But yeah, like here's a pretty. And that's a nice potato. Oh, that's a smooth potato. Yeah, okay. and that was just one that was, and I'm really trying to figure out as I dig why certain ones are doing that. If it's, you know, because I ended up here, I had thought for a while, you know how my paths were raised, I've always talked about that. Mm -hmm. So when I mulched all this, remember right when you were here last year, I mulched it with that fresh mulch. Okay. Um, and I had raked even on top of those um, beds, or the paths, so they'd be even higher, and then I planted the sweet potatoes in those. Because I was thinking over the years, it seems like the ones that were raised seem to be producing more. But it doesn't seem any better this year, and it actually, it seems like the prettier ones were down in the lower spot that didn't have as much mulch material. And speaking of mulch again, remember how unbroken down this was last fall? It was really woody. Yeah, look at it's a gone. It's gone. I mean, there's wood on top, but I mean, it looks really four, composty in that area. That, that looks inches, good. That was four inches of thick. You know, mulch, and look at it, it's only like just the bare covering of the bigger sticks. And that was with the heavy cover crop on there, it still deteriorated and broke down well, like think, that. 
I think the, that actually helps it because there's more, you know, the root mass there also nurtures soil life, which, you know, needs to eat just like the microherd in Maine. The microherd here is eating, you know, that mulch. Well, I'll show you what I've been doing to the sweet this because I'm trying not to, you know, kill. And so I've, over the years, I've noticed that, you know, you can dig all over here and there's hardly any potatoes, you know? So instead of that, I'll just go along with my hand so you're only looking for the ones that are sticking out of the top, you're not even going in for the possibles that are down there. Right, because over the years, they're just not there. So that's where Slip was. You can see the big, you know, and but, you know, and there's production there, but they're ugly, you know, but like I say, I think they've been in the ground way too long. You know, again, I was hoping there'd be like crazy amounts because of the southern peas, but, you know, I'm just happy to have the ground covered. And I'd like kind of this, whole thing that I'm not like coming through here with like a potato digger and popping all the soil life up into the air and aerating it because I think it'll hold moisture better doing it this way over now, the years. Now Jim I have a question for you. I see no queen palm or cabbage palm here. Do you think this is something that came into the mulch? Well so I mean that's a good example of a drop. That's you know, a nice that's one. That's a prettier yeah, one. Yeah that's really you nice. Know, it's still a little bit on there but you know what you know what amazes me is so even over at my pond right there's not a cabbage palm not a queen palm over there right and during when I don't cover it with a black cloth, there's like 500,000 little palms come up. The robins bring them in. Oh, wow. So that's what I'm thinking I'm seeing here mostly. It wasn't in the mulch because the mulch is hot. I think it kills most of them, but it's just bird life brings stuff in. Okay. You know, and plants it itself, and that's how, you know, they get established. But I'm amazed at how little is left of that really thick mulch that I put down. You know, Pretty much disintegrated. Yeah. Six months. Yeah. Whoa, I got a uh, little surprise for you guys. And you're not gonna believe this one, and I think it's kinda cool. So what's your name over here? Uh, I'm uh, Joey. Joey, how'd you find me? Uh, found you through a uh, Justin Rhodes video. Was it actually that Justin Rhodes guy? Yeah. It's our first time meeting today too, huh? Yes sir. Cool, so you had called me and told me you were interested in farming, what, about six, eight months ago? Yeah. Yep, and what, you Back woofed here. all summer long? Uh, woofed, I woofed uh, May, June, and then I Got a job out in Arizona. Cool. Out a farm out there, an internship. Nice. Yeah, and I uh, just got back like last week. Very cool, and you're ready to hit the ground running, it sounds like. Oh yeah, yeah, excited. All right, very cool. I'm excited. Yeah. So, for you guys that don't know, Joey called me here yesterday and told me he just got back in town. He had been woofing all summer long and he was looking to lease some land and I haven't told you guys this yet, but Justin just told me he's coming back for a week, the beginning of December. And uh, I had been kind of ragging on and beating up market gardening there a little bit. And I'm like, oh, we're going into winter. That's like the only thing we can do down here. And I don't have time to get a market garden growing. So Joey called me looking for the lease land. I'm like, you know what? Meet me at Jim's house tomorrow. Yeah. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll sling some sweat together, see how it goes. Talk about, you know, the space I have at my property because I have some land we're not using. And if things work out, Joey's going to be uh, developing a market garden over there. So you might be uh, you might be seeing a little bit of more Joey here. Heck so yeah, man. Hopefully. Yeah. Hold tight. How's the uh, success so far? Yeah, mixed, I'd say. Um, mixed? I'm more ugly than I like, but I think I'll just have to deal with it. Um, you know, once you get that, I won't have to try to sell 10,000 pounds now. What are you thinking you're going to pull out of this? 1,200, 1,500 maybe? I was thinking either. I mean, they really do add up, you know, because they're so dense. So, yeah, somewhere between, you know, 12 and maybe even 2,000. I thought that was pretty neat. So you told me you'll sell these almost as a... Uh, Three different categories we've got. Yeah, the... I'll go through and grade them. You, a lot of times when I'm going slower by myself, I'll grade them as I pull them. But yeah, there's pretties, uglies, and very uglies. But... So what's the uh, what's the big takeaway here? I mean, I know we didn't get a ton of potatoes, but we don't have a lot of weeds. No, that's a you know that's one of my main things. That's why I started with it. You know? <laughs> and then you start kind of getting greedy when you get a little bit of a harvest because a couple years, you know, I had a lot of pretties one year, and I was oh wow, this is another thing. But um, you know, I might have to keep evolving it, evolving it, or um, you know, maybe even going to a different cover crop. But I, you know, I like the black eyed peas. I think that's going to be a good one for the winter crops. We'll see how they go, but I think it's going to really rock with that. Added nitrogen and you know the nematodes. 
hopefully suppress. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you start throwing different things in the mix. Like, I mean, this would have been something I would have been doing this area like probably six, eight weeks from now. Wow. You know, because I just didn't have time to get to it because I need to be planting over there. So now I've got this open ground. So if I just rake this out, I could seed like this whole area to arugula and do like a big sale of arugula because I won't be planting the um, the blocks. You know, the soil blocks down here till probably it won't be till eight weeks from now. So there is that window, and arugula you can be harvesting in you know like 25, 30 days. Direct zone, quick cash crop. Wow. And I did buy a lot of seed at Dedco this year, so. Um, yeah, I don't know what else I might try. You know, I've got a lot of potatoes left over from me and then I'm hoping to sprout here pretty quick in the garage. And as soon as they sprout, I'll get them in the ground. And that'd be another one, because uh, most of the ones I saved are the, the early ones, like the Anushka, the, um, what's the other one I like so good? Um, Natasha, both those. And then the Pinto, that's pretty early too. All those are, you know, I could have, plant them and within, you know, six to eight weeks have crop and then have room, you know, get them out and plant something else. Wow. What's forcing them to sprout? Just being in the darkness? It's a change in, you know, I, I've tried different things to make that happen because they call it chitting. Chitting, okay. Yeah, and it's something about you take them out of cool and get them into warm and humid. You know, and that's kind of what I just did for Maine, right? Bringing them here naturally yeah. happened. Wow. So, because um, I already noticed some I had even that I'd set in like bins up in Maine that had little eyes on them already. Um, some of that red gold, which is another early, I, same thing happened. So um, that could be a bonus because people love those new potatoes. Wow. I mean, I love them too. Um, yeah, so we'll see what else. You know, the turmeric's looking really good this year. You said yours is rocking. I, I got to pull some yet, but I sent some up to Maine yesterday. So. That's potentially a bigger crop for next year. You're talking about sun hemp. You're talking about all kinds of changes. Yeah, well, I got some. Got to diversify, huh? And, you know, I've seen how much help, you know, can add to my time away from the garden doing other things so um we're only five hours in right you know wow. alexander and the boys did the same thing and i've got you know jordan's coming from minnesota and maybe my niece from spokane washington's coming out so i might have help here this winter too all right jim that's a wrap hey thanks a lot this is awesome so you got some potatoes to bring to the market got some potatoes to sort and take to market some dog food treats and um a lot of land to plant so you've given me a whole new um palette to work with this way you said there might be some uh changes in the planting design and just everything be, huh? just because of the opportunity yeah oh and you're even now let's uh i forgot you're even flying back up to maine again this year i am i got yep yeah, first week of december i'll be up there for a week so for the locals here that want to find your sweet potatoes, where are these going to be? Um, they'll probably be some at Wright's, but Tasty Tuesday and Sweetwater. Um, now, you said Wright's, so for everybody, where, what is Wright's? Okay, Wright's Natural Market. Um, they're out on 19 presently, um, just north of Main Street on 19 in Newport Ritchie. And then they're moving downtown to the old IGA we just drove by that you saw. It said the food liner on it, so okay. they're going to be an anchor tenant in that for um, uh, Frank Starkey. But, yeah. Looking good. you got a lot of seedlings to put in the ground got a lot to grow yet. <laughs> I only got the first thousand started over there. So, Whew. Well, How many do you do a year? About 10,000. About 10,000 yeah. starts. And then that's not counting the direct seed. I do, you know, that's adding another 20,000 carrots go in and I don't know how many snow apples and potatoes. And, so mm. it's a good diversity, but that's how many soil block seedlings I plant. Wow. All right, guys. So you heard Jim. So if you want his potatoes, I would say Tasty Tuesday. Tasty Tuesday is the place. You, yeah. do, you doing the Thursday market again? No, I'm just, I don't got enough stuff. Not enough know? stuff? So I'm just going to make a presence there so I get to see people on a weekly basis and keep, you know, keep oh, kind of alive because you could kind of get sidetracked into just planting if you don't market at all for, I, I really won't have a lot again until Christmas now. And then the Dunedin Co-op? Dunedin Co-op, yeah, I'll okay. keep doing that. Are you going to be at Sweetwater? Uh, one more time at Sweetwater because I got a little more squash and stuff left there, and um, but that'll be it until probably first of the year. Until things start coming in as far yep. as the veggies. Okay. Yep. All right, guys, we're out of here. We've been harvesting all day. Ian, you get enough? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, you guys know the story. Like, subscribe, share, and I'm going to let Jim give you the final. Come on, Jim. Pound it. What is it? You got to take your fist and punch the punch. Oh, the I didn't know that. All right. I love it. Pound it.